and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about interior pelvic tilts, how you can help strengthen your pelvic floor, common mistakes people make with form, and how this can relate to back pain potentially. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So this topic today, anterior pelvic tilt, uh, is something that I'm familiar with from personal experience. Um, I was diagnosed with psoas syndrome at one point, psoas being the muscle that comes from your inner thigh through the hip flexor and groin into your upper or into your back here. And part of what was causing my chronic low back pain was the psoas syndrome and this over tightness in the deep core muscles in the front through that psoas muscle as well wasn't allowing proper engagement. And it also was putting my back into an anterior pelvic tilt. So an anterior pelvic tilt is when the pelvis tips forward so the glutes come out more and you get more of that low belly sticking out. And this is a issue that is pretty common, I think, among people, especially if you do a lot of sitting or sh have that shortening of that psoas muscle. And so a lot of times through my years being an athlete and lifting, I for years saw physical therapists and had coaches and trainers, and no one ever corrected some of these common mistakes I was making. So as far as squatting, Many people, you know, you don't want your back to be arched when you squat down, but oftentimes I see people overcompensate where then they have this arch in the low back when they're squatting, where in reality you want to pull in this pelvic floor. So pulling that belly button into the core, imagine it coming into the spine. So we're keeping this flat through that low back instead of having this dip with the booty coming out then. So some ways to, start working on this maybe in your yoga practice even is for one thing beginning with a lunge so when you start in a lunge anytime you always want to play around with your hip positions and your back so it's important to start by inhaling making sure you have a tall spine tucking those hips under so that again you're not coming into your lunge like this where no matter how high you are you know you don't have that back caving in and we're not leaning forward like this. So it's engaged, hips are forward. And then also you can play around with the positioning of the hips, shifting forward or back, one hip, just messing around with that alignment, noticing how this engages different areas. But as far as that interior pelvic tilt and pelvic floor, definitely making sure that those hips are tucked under, that belly button pulled into the spine. Then if we look at something else like our uh, bird dogs maybe, for that, we start in tabletop and one leg extends, the opposite arm extends overhead. And here, a lot of times I see people, again, arch in that low back, or maybe they crunch and then they come back and that leg is high above. So the idea is we want to try to keep a level plane here. So we're pulling that deep core muscles in, that belly button into the spine, and thinking about keeping the hips level here. So they're square here, square to the front of the mat. And again, we are flat through this low back, through the core, not going this way, not hyperextending this way, but right in the middle there. So those are just a couple of ways to be thinking about this, thinking about that core engagement and how to avoid some common mistakes that may be putting your back into this anterior pelvic tilt. And you may notice that over time, if you begin to stretch, especially through those deep core muscles, stretching the psoas, that you might notice that you have different muscles actually beginning to engage that you didn't notice maybe you even had there before. So not only is strengthening these deep core muscles important, but so is stretching them, getting that deep release. For me, I know that when I started working on my psoas and my anterior pelvic tilt, I was like, holy cow, what are these muscles? I've never even felt that before when I started having different areas fire that I'd never experienced triggering or firing properly before. So that is all I have for you today. Just a few tips, a few common mistakes and things to be uh, paying attention to during your practice, whether that's lifting or doing yoga, whatever it may be, even standing um, regular postures from day to day, noticing how you're holding yourself um, sitting or standing throughout your day as well. Thank you again for tuning in and I will see you soon, my friends. Have a great day.